Okay, um, this is our lesson on absolute value equations, and you'll notice in parentheses, this is the first lesson that I believe for most of you will be new material. Uh, so everything we've done up to this point has been reviewing concepts of numbers and skills from Algebra 1, reinforcing those and trying to get those solid before we move into something new. Now, I think the definition for absolute value, there's usually a lot of students in Algebra 2 who have had it before, um, and typically they agree on it. Um, the best definition of absolute zero that I know of that I think is visual is this. Absolute value is the distance from zero on the number line. And we were doing, we've been doing quite a bit with number lines the last couple of lessons, and I, I'm a big fan of number lines. Uh, so it's the actual distance from zero on the number line. So if we've got uh, a number line and we have zero on it, um, the absolute value is how far away we are from zero, and it could be to the right, or you could go to the left, okay? It could be in either direction, but it's the distance from zero. The symbol for absolute value is this. It's two vertical lines, and I want to give the caution, make sure that they don't look like ones, okay? So sometimes students will get really lazy and they'll do this, okay? That's a little bit too lazy. I can't tell, aside from context, whether that is the absolute value of two or the number 121. So you do want to make sure that your absolute values look different from your ones. They're usually a little bit taller. So we'll do a couple of examples of absolute value. The absolute value of the number two is asking you how far away from zero is two on the number line. So here's the zero, here's two. If I were to bust out a ruler and measure that distance, that would be two units long. Absolute value of negative two. Again, it's the distance from zero on the number line. So here's the zero, here's negative two, and if I were to bust out my ruler and measure the distance between them, it would be two units. Now, this will sometimes lead students to make the conclusion that absolute value is always positive. Um, not necessarily, and we'll look at that in a moment. You can also do absolute value of decimals. So the absolute value of 1.5. Uh, where, where would 1.5 be? You have 0, and then you have 1, and you have 2. And 1.5 is right in the middle. And if you bust out your ruler, 1.5 is 1.5 units away from 0 on the number line. Now, I mentioned a moment ago that um, sometimes students will say that absolute value is always positive. And that's almost true, but not quite true. And here's the exception to it. The absolute value of 0 is asking us how far away is zero from zero on the number line. So if I took this and I busted out my ruler, I would measure zero. Um, and zero is not a positive number. So if somebody says, well, absolute value is always positive, it's actually a false statement because there's this one exception to it. Um, the absolute value of zero is not positive. So let's take a look at a very simple equation. Topic today is absolute value equations. So we're going to look at a simple equation just to get the picture of what we're doing with it and how to uh, check your answers. And then we'll look at a harder example and I'm going to give you your steps for your do and your undo. So suppose I have the absolute value of x equals 3. I know that this is an equation because it has the equal sign there. And pretty much I am looking for a number whose distance from zero is three. Go back to the definition. I know definitions can be boring, but they're important. Absolute value means distance from zero. 
So absolute value of x means distance from zero of x. And what is that distance? It's three. So on my number line, I'm gonna put my zero, and I want to ask myself, what numbers are three units away from zero? Well, I can count three units to the right. One, two, three, that's gonna put me right here. I could also count in the other direction. One, two, three, and put my dot right there. I actually have two numbers that I can find that are three units away, and those numbers are three and negative three. This means that this equation has two answers. And you have to get both answers in order to get a problem fully correct. Now, just like with any equation, you can check your answer by plugging it back into the original equation. So if I take negative three and I plug it back in, this is the check, the absolute value of negative three is three and I get that true statement and I could check it again with the positive and they both check, and so they are both answers. So let's take a look at a more complicated equation. This problem is three times the absolute value of x plus two, and then outside the absolute value, I have a minus one, and then I have an equal to eight. So we are going to approach this um, in, a, in a logical way. We want each step of the reasoning to make sense. I don't want you guys just remembering uh, random steps. The steps should make sense. They should be logical. Um, I will point out that the absolute value acts like a grouping symbol. So when our, with our order of operations, when we have, um, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, um, that we have the parentheses as our grouping symbol, the absolute value qualifies as a grouping symbol. So you're going to treat, treat it like parentheses. So over here in this column, I am going to kind of analyze what is happening to the X, and that's going to develop our plan for how to solve it. So we start off with X. So I'm going to say we start with X. Okay, so here's the X. And then I'm going to ask myself, what am I doing to that X? Well, order of operation says you start with grouping symbols. So the first thing we're doing to the X is we're adding the two, and that's because it's inside the grouping symbol. So I'm going to add two, and I'm writing that over here in this column. So start with X, then we add two. Now I have a three and I have a minus one. We know from order of operations that multiplying comes before subtracting, and that is multiplying, and I'll put the little time sign in there. Oh, maybe, maybe I won't. It really, it really doesn't want me to, there we go. It didn't want me to write it. Uh, so we multiplying comes before subtracting, so after we add the two, um, then we're gonna multiply, oh. Okay, I had a moment. Uh, we add the two, and then we have to deal with the grouping symbol, okay? Um, and so after we add the two, the x plus two is stuck in the absolute value, and I need to make sure I include that in my list. Um, we don't want to ignore that. So we're taking the absolute value. We have to have that grouping symbol in there. Um, then this is what I was saying earlier, and I apologize for kind of the glitch there. Um, then we have the multiplying by three. And then after we multiply by three, then we're subtracting the one. Okay, let me recap that because I did kind of fumble in the middle there. So, so we start with the X. Here's the X on the left-hand side. Then we're adding two because we have to start inside the grouping symbol. So that's our order of operations, kind of starting with parentheses. In this case, absolute value, add two. Then we have the absolute value. We know that absolute value means distance from zero. So then we're taking the distance from zero. Then we're multiplying by three 
and then we're subtracting 1. And after we do all that, that is equal to 8. Now, by eight, being able to analyze what we've done, what we've done is we've outlined this like plan of what we've done. If I want to solve the equation, I am going to undo it. And remember, the last thing that you did um, dictates the first thing that you will undo. So if the last thing that I did was subtract 1, the first thing I will do in solving is add 1. And so I'm going to write add 1. And we'll add 1 to both sides. Negative 1 plus 1 is 0. That's why we're choosing to do that and that's why it drops out. Next thing that I did going up uh, would be multiply by 3. Well, how do I undo multiplication? I undo it with division. And if I multiplied by 3, then to undo it, I will divide by 3. Take the left side, take the right side, divide by 3. Um, on the left, um, 3 divided by 3 is 1. And on the right side, uh, 9 divided by 3 is 3. Now this is where we get into new stuff. Uh, my next step is take the absolute value. So in order to proceed, I have to undo the absolute value. So how would I undo the absolute value? I'm going to undo the absolute value by using the definition of absolute value. So we're going to go back to that number line. The distance from 0 is 3. Distance from 0 is 3. There are two numbers that have a distance from 0 of 3. That would be positive 3 and negative 3. So whatever is in that absolute value is either equal to negative 3 or it's equal to 3. So the way this looks when we undo the absolute value is x plus 2 could be the negative 3 or x plus 2 could be equal to positive 3. And that's how you undo the absolute value. And that's the new step. That's the thing that most of you have never seen before. Moving up to the green step here, adding 2. How do I undo adding 2? I would undo adding 2 by subtracting 2. And you just have to do it in both equations. So um, here we have 2 minus 2 is 0, leaving me with x. And negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Just watch your signs there. Um, here, 2 minus 2 is 0, and 3 minus 2 is 1. And so I have these two answers. Um, x is negative uh, 5 and x is 1. And there's your plan. If you're watching this at home or you're re-watching it, oh, let me fill this in because I feel like I should. Um, we're going to end with x and complete this this like nice little screenshot here, um, is, is kind of reason your way through that. Again, I apologize that I kind of misstepped when I was explaining that. Hopefully I recovered it okay. If any of you want me to redo it in tutoring, um, I certainly will to um, make sure that that is clear. Now, suppose you want to check your answers. And I think with, when it comes to checking your answers, it's something you should be able to do, but I don't necessarily think that it's something you should do all the time. Um, know when it's worth it to check your answers. On your homework, probably not, unless it's in the directions. If you're taking the um, FSA, your final, uh, the SAT, those are much higher stakes tests. And so if you have the time, you probably should um, check your answers. But this is how you would do it. Remember, the solution to an equation is whatever makes the equation true. So if I want to check to see if negative 5 works, what I do is I'm going to plug in the negative 5 for the x. And you would plug it in if you ever had more than one x, you would plug it in in all the places. Uh, and then follow your order of operations. So negative three uh, plus uh, negative five plus two is negative three. The absolute value of negative three is three. 
3 times 3 is 9, and 9 minus 1 is 8, and that is a true statement. And then we would do the same thing with the 1, and we'll use a different color. We'll use the green. So I have 3, and this time I would put in the 1, plus 2 minus 1 is 8, 1 plus 2 is 3, the absolute value of 3 is 3, 3 times 3 is 9, and 9 minus 1 is 8. And that so tells you that both of those answers actually check. Now, where um, I'm going to have you want to do your checks is in um, problems that have more than one variable. So I'm going to show you one of those because that's um, a little bit harder than what we do in this class. Uh, but you could see it on a final. You could see it in some other places where it might be covered like in an honors level class. And I want you to be able to attack the problem um, that way. All right, this kind of uh, absolute value equation is a much more challenging one. And the reason why it's much more challenging is because you have an X inside the absolute value and then you have this other X outside the absolute value. Uh, the principles for solving this are exactly the same as the one that we just went through, um, but it is a little trickier to do because you end up with um, variables on the outside. Usually with other stuff, you have to make a whole bunch of stuff negative, not just a constant. So one way that you could solve a problem like this, if you saw an absolute value equation, say, on... Um, the the FSA, your final, um, I guess you guys don't take an FSA for this class, but um, is you could do that by plugging in the answer choices and checking to see if they work. So if I wanted to see if a three worked, I would take a three and I would plug it in where both X's are. So I have an X right here and then I have another X on the other side and both of those X's need to be plugged in with a three. Um, two times three is six, and then the absolute value of six is six, and six minus three is three, and that is true. Now, what that tells me is that x equals three is one of the answers. So if you're playing the multiple choice game, uh, if you look down here, answer choice C does not have x equals three, as one of the answer choices. So you're not gonna pick that because X equals three is one of the answer choices. Same deal with answer choice D. I know that X equals positive three has to be one of the answer choices and it's not for D. So if you're taking a multiple choice test and you're running out of time and you have to guess, you are gonna guess either choice A or choice B, but you're not gonna go to C or D. Now we have to decide between the uh, negative 3 and the negative 1. So let's go ahead and plug in the negative 3. So 2 times negative 3, we'll subtract 3, and then we have to put the negative 3 on the other side. 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. The absolute value of negative 6 is 6. 6 minus 3 is 3, and I end up with 3 equals negative 3. That is what's called false, and what it means is that x equals negative 3 is not a solution. So I am not going to pick answer choice A, and what you're going to bubble in if you had to do a problem like this is you're going to bubble in answer choice B. Um, I could plug in the negative 1 um, to show you that that works. And I don't think it would take us too long to do. I'll just, I'll just set it up. Because I think plugging stuff in this way is a little bit awkward looking. Um, I'm going to plug in the negative 1 there. And then I have to plug in the negative 1 on the other side as well. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. The absolute value of negative 2 is 2. And 2 minus 3 is negative 1. And so I can see that that is a true statement. So that's where the plugging in the answer choices is really, really helpful. I want to summarize this lesson. So how do you solve absolute value equations? Here's our summary. You want to isolate the absolute value. 
And I am going to, on these notes, I'm going to underline it in yellow. And now I'm going to underline it in red. And now I'm going to underline it in a gray that you probably can't even see. And then let's do a blue. Okay, because this step, students want to skip. They just want to pretend there's no absolute value like in the problem at all. And they don't want to isolate it. You have to isolate the absolute value first before you do anything else. Step two is you will split it into two equations. Almost all the time. The only time you will not split it into two equations is if it's equal to zero. Um, so you split it into equations as long as it's not equal to zero. If it's not equal to zero, then you're going to end up with two equations. That's the step. You have to isolate the absolute value before you split it into two equations. I'm saying this a bunch of times, but it's because I have to. Um, and then once you do that, it should be pretty simple to solve. In this class, it'll probably be a, a two-step equation once you do that. All right, so I'm going to put a problem up here. And then I'm not sure at the time of this recording what we're going to do. We might break into small groups uh, to do this if we're doing it virtually um, or just independent work. We'll see. I'm not even sure what day we're going to do this lesson yet. So I would like you to solve two times the absolute value of x plus 9 and then outside the absolute value plus 3 equals 7. And we will finish the rest of this up in class.